that last sip of Herbal Life drinking. Getting ready to start. Steve says episode number 24. Just getting mic'd up, getting this stuff set up. Make sure we're all set, we're all ready. All right, so let's do this. So this is first time we're doing this, first time I'm doing this on, on this new page, this person, this Steve Eckert page. There's going to be more about like the motivation type stuff, different things like this Steve says, because each week we do this Steve says, it's not necessarily based just around the gym. Of course, we always tie the gym into it and things about the gym and weight loss and stuff like that into it, but it's not always about, it's really could always have to do with anything in your life, whether it's your, your business life, your, your home life, just getting everything set up here. So we're going to do it on this page each week, starting this week. It'll still be shared probably on the other pages, so you can still check it out or whatever. So this week we're going to go over, we're going to cover three categories of people who want to see you fail, and, and then the two ways to overcome or defeat them. There's, there's different categories, so today we're going to discuss those different categories of slime balls out there that oppose you in your quest for greatness. You know, whether it's at the office, your business, at home, or the gym, these people are out to get you. So I'll help you identify them and then show you how to overcome and eventually defeat them. So like I said, we're on this page for the first time. Just started the page a couple days ago. So just getting the followers, getting started on there. I think it's already about 200 followers on this page. So it's not going to be as much as the other pages. We have about 5,000 on that personal Facebook page was capped out. That's why we had to start some new pages and do the, the lives over here. So make sure if you're watching this or you're seeing the, the shared file of this when I share it to the other pages that you go to this Steve Becker page and like it, follow it, share it, and then leave a review. It's going to be all the motivational type stuff like this and different, different things like this. So basically, this is personal development, personal, personal development peak freak style as you've come to see on these, on these Facebook Lives. Life is a, a freaking war. The invasion is coming and we will be ready. So mo some people will hate on the things that I have to talk about, but most people will be able to relate to it. Who we got in there? Brian Cleary. Brian Cleary's in there. He's going to be back soon. How you doing, Brian? How's the recovery coming? Ready to roll? All right, so this, what, this, what this Steve Says broadcast is about each week, make sure you're sharing this so other people who already don't know about this page know this is going on this page now. That's why it won't be too many people watching this, but that's fine. We're going to share it. Make sure you're sharing that right while you're watching it. Share it, like it, make sure you leave a review. So this, what, this, what this Steve, say, Steve says live broadcast is about each week, it's about adapting and overcoming, become a better version of yourself every day, getting your shit together, stop being a little bitch, trusting the process, and not making any excuses. That's what it's about. Two more weeks. Two more weeks and Brian Cleary is back. So you can always put your questions, add your questions, add them onto there. You never know what's going to happen. We're going to always do, go over different self-development type things on this page. So you can always send in your questions, ask them here live, and I'll, I'll take care of them. So like I said, we're going over today, three categories of people who want to see you fail and then the two ways to overcome and defeat them. These, these people will, you know, any bit of success or discipline or dedication or results you begin to show eats up these people alive. All three of these categories of people will go through great lengths to stop you in your tracks and prevent you from advancing, whether it's in the office, the business, the gym, or just life in freaking general. These three fucking slime balls want you to go down, to lose, to fail. They basically want to see you fucking die. And it's not the same ones like I talked about in the past where I was talking about characteristics of people or traits of people, which was like jealousy and all that other stuff. You know, we're going to discuss these three types and then the two ways to defeat them and overcome them. Now, these three words are not the characteristics like we did in the past, like those fake, jealous, crab little bitches that we talked about in the past or those different characteristics of people. These are categories of people. So it's a little bit different, a little more broad. Pretty much all those traits that we've talked about in the past can be found in all three of these categories. These, these three categories are just absolutely disgusting, toxic fucking people. Now, now th just give a couple examples of, of what I'm talking about, where we're going with this. Think about it. You have that boyfriend or girlfriend or, or fucking goat. You know, they're so wonderful. They're a ray of fucking sunshine when they walk into the fucking room. They, you know, where have you been all my life? Some dumbass Jerry Maguire, Celine Dion bullshit. 
then it's, you know, it, it's Sunday night and you want to watch reruns of freaking Beavis and Butthead and they want to watch Game of Thrones. So, you know, what a fucking dilemma. What a drama. Or another example, you're, you know, you, you have your drinking, your little buddies, you're drinking at the water cooler buddies at work. You got drinking at the bar after work or whatever, you know, at that exciting you know, data analysis or sales office job of yours. Your coworkers are slow, fat, lazy, and couldn't give two shits about the work they're doing at, at the job. You know, they too, much like the two friends in the previous example, they're far more interested in, in Game of fucking Thrones or, you know, a game of football than anything tangible or worthwhile in the real world. Your co- this coworker friend is all about football and it shows in their poor, poor performance in work and in their results and then it shows in their freaking paychecks. You know, you, you realize personally that, that some stupid fucking dragon family on TV or some stupid fucking football, football game is not going to pay your bills. You also realize those football players making millions aren't up at home upset, cheering you on, you know, when you're trying to close that big deal. And they don't lose sleep when you miss the sale. They don't sit there talking about it, how they feel so sorry for you and they feel so bad for you and they're depressed for like weeks at a time because you didn't, you didn't close the deal the way people do when their sports team loses and shit like that. So your thought process is fuck the fucking dragons and fuck football. I need to put food on the table. So, you know, plus you actually take, actually take pride in the work you do and you, you even enjoy it. This is your passion and it, and it also shows in your performance and it starts showing in your paycheck and your paycheck starts to increase. Next thing you know, you get a promotion at work. You're, you're rapidly moving up in the company. You're now in charge of those dragon flying, football watching freaking fools. So they probably won't be too fucking happy with that. So a third example of, wh- of where we're going with this, where, the, where this episode is going. A third example. You know, you have a, a, a few kids. You let yourself go a little bit. You put on a few extra pounds maybe. You know, you, you know you've gained some weight and it's obvious to most people around you that you packed on a few unwanted pounds. So you decide... Uh, you know, you're going to go and get back on track. You're going to take control, get your shit together. You start eating healthy, start working out every day. You start seeing a little bit of results immediately. So those fucking results motivate you and, and, they, and it motivates you to kick it up a notch, taking things to the next level. So you've now set high standards for yourself and high goals for yourself and you're obsessed and you're obsessed with getting there and getting the results. Nothing will stop you. You're a fucking determined freaking savage. So you don't have much time for hanging out or going to restaurants or hanging out with your friends, going out drinking with your friends. You need time to prep your meals. You, you got to get those workouts in every day. Make sure you get enough sleep to recover. And, you know, oh, and you also have that whole job thing you got to take care of, right? So these are your priorities now. This is your fucking health. This is your family, your life. It's your fucking destiny. You will not be denied. This is what you've, you've told yourself and this is the direction you're taking things with your life. So your so-called friends or family or whoever they are, start, start saying, you know, you just think you're too good for them or start acting like you think you're too good for them. And that's how it goes. Like you, th- then they stop calling you and they start. And so these are all three examples that I can come up. I can come up with unlimited fucking examples of this like, type of drama or whatever you want to call it that would fit into to go to go to this point of these three types of categories of people that we're talking about. But in all three of these, one way or another, these people were against you. They re- became your adversaries, even though you didn't realize it, for different reasons, different scenarios. These people against you will fall into one of three categories. You know, I suppose depending on their personality or maybe genetics or maybe just their overall underlying fucking deviousness or bitch acidness or something. But these three categories that, I'm, that we're going to go into are very different from each other, but they're also very similar, or at least similar objectives, which is halting your progress in life and, and, and cr- causing your fucking downfall. So there's these three things that we're going to go into. Wait, this is how I do when I first started. Yes, basically. Probably still. So you're there. I actually have a quote later from a movie, Brian Cleary. You're the exact one that I want to see if he's going to get my, get know what this is. It's a hard one, but we'll see if you get it. My kid told me to say it today. This is his favorite quote from this movie. So I'm going to say it and see if you know that in a, in a couple minutes here. So there's three, three categories of people. There's not, see if, see if you can come up and figure out what those three categories of people, but I'm going to go into it because there's really no time for it. We need to get it rolling. Got a lot of stuff to get to. There's three categories of people, not characteristics, but categories. The first one is your enemies. Enemies. The definition of enemies is your, you know, your opponent, your adversary, your foe, your rival, the antagonist, your combatant, challenger, competitor, opposer. The opposition, your competition, the other side, the opposing side, the dark side, the fucking invader, the traitor, the detractor, the betrayer, the slanderer, the saboteur. That's what an enemy is. This is what I'm talking about. And everyone has enemies out there, whether you know it or not. You know, 
a, an enemy is a, a person who is actively opposing or hostile to someone or something, which in this case, we're talking about you. It's a thing that harms or weakens someone else. That's what your enemy is. A person who feels hatred for or, or harmful designs against or engages in antagonistic activities against another it's basically your adversary, your opponent. Yes, enemy is a strong fucking word. And, but out of the three categories of people, the enemy is the softest and the easiest one to deal with. We're going to get into all that. So based on these descriptions, you know, that might have left out only a small percentage of the people in your life who aren't considered your enemies. Once I just listed through all the different types of enemies that you can have or different people that are actually enemies. Enemies are usually pretty easy to spot once, once they show their slimy fucking heads. They're, they're the, they are the ones out there actively campaigning against you and your success and they're not really hiding it they're just out there in the open saying i'm trying to take you down you know it's like a, a match on pay-per-view they they're not making it hidden you know like some other types of the people that we're going to discuss or other types of categories we're going to discuss you know they might have even been your friend at one point in fact i bet a lot of your enemies were at one time supposedly your freaking friend or so-called friend so look at all, look at all the three situations and those stories that i just described earlier any one of those can create your enemy a deep hatred of, of a person for you is your enemy so enemies make it known that they're out to get you so at least i can respect the fact that they're letting the world know that they're a fucking scumbag you know i can't exactly say that for the next two the next one down the line the second one to me is is basically is a classification of douchebaggery that's even a little worse than the enemy another way of describing this kind of person is an oppressor a teaser, a tormentor, an intimidator, an antagonizer, an annoyer, or a fucking pest. That's how you would describe this next type, this next category of person that's trying to see you fail. I'm a movie guy challenge. Yeah, we'll see if you get this coming up. So this is a, a you know an overbearing person who habitually badgers and intimidates smaller and weaker people. You know, they're loud or loudly arrogant or overbearing. Not like this now. I'm not loudly arrogant or overbearing. This just happens to be when I'm talking to you. I like to sit alone in a dark, quiet corner, not talking to anyone. So, you know, what, see if you can figure out what type of person that is. But I'm going to have to tell you, if you didn't get it with all that, a parasite. Yeah, pretty close. It's a bully. A bully is basically a parasite. They're all parasites, you know. But we're not exactly talking about the, the schoolyard bully in elementary school, but they probably have evolved into the asshole adult bullies that I'm referring to. And, you know, they probably did create the next generation of schoolyard bullies in their freaking kids. Some people shouldn't even be able to have them, but whatever. That's a whole different topic. So since we're on the subject, let's talk about those playground bullies for a second. I never had much of a problem with bullies in, in you know, when I was a kid, or at least not physically, maybe mentally, as in like making fun of my old clothes or my father's shitty car that had no muffler, but never, never too much of a physical bullying thing. I guess they understood that I would just bite their fucking noses off or something. So I really didn't have much of a physical bullying problem, but mentally and tormenting, probably a little bit. You know, if I can go back to high school and change one thing, it would have been to get in a lot of more fights and stick up for a lot more people. I guarantee some kids in high school never got over that shit that, you know, that, you know, how fucking stupid could it be that you get made fun of in school for being smart and, and doing good and doing what you're supposed to and getting good grades and you get made fun of it for it. You're a nerd or whatever, whatever they want to say, you know? Sometimes I would just hope in high school I would get bullied just because I was a ghost. I was a nobody. I was a fucking loser. So at least that would have been some kind of attention for me to get. It also would have given me a reason to crack someone's fucking skull open. But that's, that's also a whole nother story. So I've taught my son pretty, pretty well in sticking up and for protecting his sister and his mother and himself. Since his birth, I've been preparing for my speech that I'm going to have at the principal's office visits when I have to go there. You know, I would much rather him punch a few bullies in the freaking nose than go and jump off the Tappan Zee Bridge from being bullied. So... That's no problem with me. Punch first, ask questions later. Anyway, back to those adult bullies that we're talking about. So we were talking about the enemies and now we're on to bullies. Bullies to me are a little worse than the enemies. They're the ones at work that harass you about your personal life or your personal relationships or your lack of your personal relationships. They put you down. They try to make fun of you in front of other people. You, you know, we're not just talking about friendly shit talking or sarcasm that you might have like in the, between your friends or whatever or, or acquaintances. We're talking about you know, people deviously trying to hurt you emotionally or make you seem inferior around other people, really trying to bring you down and not let you succeed by bullying you. So there's the first two. There's your enemies. There's your bullies. Now, the third category is the worst of them all and probably not one you will have thought of. While you think about what that is, I'm going to take a quick sip of my Herbalife drink. So this third one, you really probably didn't think of it because to me, this one is worse than the enemies and it's worse than the bullies but you're probably not going to think about it. 
So this third category of people is the worst of them all. This, I'll let you know ways, I'll describe it and we'll see if you can come up with that in your head. It's a coward, a crybaby, a pushover, a chicken, or to me, a, a fucking loser. It's a weak, ineffectual, timid person. A feeble, ineffective person. If you can figure out what that is in like three seconds, I give you some credit. It's one of the tougher ones that we've done of these little word games we like to play each week with this self-development stuff that we do. You got about two seconds to come up with that while I adjust things here. So, again, coward, crybaby, pushover, chicken, loser. And if you notice, nothing. I'm going to tell you what it is. What, what do we got? Snakes? It is pretty much. Pretty much, but it's a little bit deeper than just a snake. It's The word I'm going to use is a wimp. A wimp. Now, if you notice, I'm saying a wimp, you think like, oh, it means a skinny, weak, physically weak person can't lift a lot of weight or, or, or can't fight or something like that. That's not what we're talking about in a wimp. If you notice, nothing mentioned in, in all those other descriptions of the word wimp, I'll, I'll tell you them again, coward, crybaby, pushover, chicken, uh, a weak, weak meaning weak-minded, ineffectual or timid person, an ineffective person. That is what a, we, a wimp is is the reason why a, a wimp of all those so it, like i said none of those are physical just to make that clear we're not saying a, a physical wimp to me that's not even a wimp at all that's not a wimp that's just a person that's not strong that's fine you know we're talking about a wimpy mindset a wimpy fucking personality the the real reason why a wimp is the worst to me even over bullies and even over your freaking enemies you know those two are more straightforward and actually more honest and moral than a wimp they're telling you what they're going to do they're saying it to your face they're saying it right in front of you you know, attacking you maybe, not saying is right, but at least they're a little more honest about it, a little more straightforward with it. A wimp is just a little bitch that in your face, they're like, hey, how you doing? Oh yeah, excellent, buddy. Yeah, sure, pal. Yeah, great to see you. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Excellent, roger that. Oh yeah, I hear you. Understood. Yeah, com I completely agree. And then what? 30 seconds later, they're, they're not near you and they're doing the exact opposite of what they're talking to you about, brewing in their head every painstaking fucking second, dying to spew it all out you know, to the first person that will listen to the hot garbage that will vomit out of their freaking mouth. So yes, these are the snakes, like you just said, the fake, you know, bitch ass, well-wishing yes men that secretly would like to see you tortured in a fucking medieval dungeon somewhere. They're the most devious of the three between the enemies, the bullies, and the wimps. The wimp is by far the worst. What do we got there? <laughs> Your boss. There, probably. See, everyone, you could, you could relate to what I'm talking about. We, we talk about the gym a lot about this stuff, but this stuff relates to everywhere in your life and your success everywhere, usually a lot of times in your, in your business, your work, your profession, whatever. You know, these wimps, they will play their dirty little devious games behind your back with the whole, the, the poor me, you know, look at me, so innocent, I'm the victim, I'm so nice, you know, but inside they're the fucking devil. And, and they want to see you fall faster and harder than even the bullies and the enemies want to see you fall. They will smile in your face for hours at a time. You know, the professional wimps will do it for months, for years, freaking plotting against you, undermining you at every opportunity they can. Their fucking personality, their face, their life, their fucking soul, it's all a lie and it's all to, to drag you down. That's why they're the most dangerous out of the enemies, the bullies, the wimps are the most dangerous. So how to defeat these three types of people? Like I said, believe it or not, the, the wimps are also the hardest to defeat. Enemies you can just outwork, out hustle, out maneuver, outwit, and just plain fucking obliterate them with your superior attitude, hard work, positivity, and sheer force. A nonstop assault, just over fucking whelming them, just running them the fuck over but before they can even comprehend what's going on. That's an easy one. An enemy's an easy one. Bullies, bullies are kind of an in-betweener. You, you need, bullies just need to give a little bitch slap or, or, or a kick to the nuts either literally or figuratively will work either way. Not saying literally a bitch slap or kicks nuts, but maybe that'll work. But I'm saying the way that you deal with them. You know, just put them in their place and then go on to the next step. We're going to go into step number two or the, the ways to deal with it. You know, wimps, wimps, are better, wimps are better than you at being a wimp. You can't attempt to play their game because they're so fucking good at it. They are, plus, trust me, they are a, be a wimp is a better fucking wimp than you. So don't even try it. You can't out wimp a wimp. You know, these, these three categories of people can come, come from any area, any direction, sometimes blindsiding you from behind, from the sides, all over the place. Like, did you ever see a movie or like a crime thriller show where, where there's like the main adversary, sometimes, you know, where it's from, from the beginning, the, you know, the general, 
across a battlefield that's trying to kill you. That's the fucking enemy. It's a clear person, a clear adversary. Then there's your half friend, the coworker that's always putting you down and dragging you down, trying to make you look bad in front of other people. Talk shit like they're just being sarcastic, but, but deep down they're really serious. This is the fucking bully, kind of the in-between one. Then you have those movies where you don't... This isn't the movie question either, Brian. Brian Cleary. This is a, that's a different one. This doesn't have to do with this. But then you have those movies where you don't know who the killer is and until the end of the movie... You know, is it, is it this person or maybe that person or it could be any of these three people that might benefit from the person's downfall or death or, you know, have interest in your downfall. Then the final scene, it turns out that the main adversary was that quiet mailroom clerk who was always so polite to you and friendly to your face but inside couldn't fucking stand you because you walk tall with your head up, your shoulders are back and down, your eyes are forward and you exude confidence and positivity and motivation and inspiration and they just want to bring on your freaking demise for some reason just because maybe their own traumatic past or something or simply their, their miserable negative experience. You know, you guessed it, that's the fucking example of the wimp. So now there's two ways to deal with these people and eventually defeat these three fucking adversaries. There are two ways. The first way, they're both very simple. Both very simple way to defeat and to, to, to overcome them. What do we got there? The Departed. No, that wasn't the movie. Scream and The Departed. But those are good, yeah. But I didn't even get to the movie quote yet. It's, I'll get to it. It's an actual quote, a, ra- a rare quote from a movie. So the two ways we're overcome these and defeat these three types of people that are trying to bring on your downfall and your failure, those are your enemies, the bullies and the wimps. There are two ways to do it. This one, one, the one way to describe it is you describe it with appreciation, compassion, insight, or pity, comprehension, maybe you would call it, recognition, responsiveness, being on the same wave identifying with. If you could figure out what I'm talking about there. This is like the power of understanding and imaginally, um, imaginatively like entering into another person's thoughts or feelings or shoes, if that's what I call it, stepping into their shoes. I'm giving you a lot of hints here. This is an easy one. You know, identifying completely with, with someone else, you know, even to the point responding physically sometimes. You're ever watching a, a boxing match or sitting on the couch and the person throws a punch and you're, you're twitching? That's, that's like the extreme case of this if you could figure out the word that we're talking about. Anyway, we got to keep moving on without wasting too much time on that. So the word, the first way you're going to overcome those enemies, those bullies, and the wimps that are trying to drag you down and, and, and take away from your success is with, even though it doesn't seem like it, is with empathy. Empathy is the one you need. Now, don't mistake that for sympathy. It is not the same thing. You know, without wasting too much time on empathy, because you don't want to waste so much time on, on someone else's bullshit, but it can be an effective way of helping to maybe even save those who aren't a fucking basket case or a lost cause, because... You know, that is our goal is to help people. So put yourself in their shoes. Look at it from their perspective to help you understand their train of thought. No matter how twisted it seems to you, you know, having empathy, like I said, is not the same as sympathy. It's not, it's also not agreeing or condoning what they're saying or even saying you still don't want to smash in their fucking face. But it's just saying that you are reasonable, that you're looking at it from an alternative perspective. You're not just being one-sided, which might even, you know, help you help someone or at the very least keep you out of fucking jail for smashing their face in, like we said. So sometimes forcing you to look through someone else's eyes or views or opinion or action, it'll make you sick to your stomach. But it's a good way to get through it. So there's the enemies, the bullies, and the wimps. So empathy for enemies. The sole purpose of this is just to learn them, their methods, which will help you understand their moves, which will then lead to their destruction. Very simple. Those are like the enemies, again, are always the easiest to deal with, always the easiest to overcome. It's easy. It's so straightforward. The empathy for bullies, again, is the in-between one. That they, they, you know, they were probably bullied as a kid. So you have to look at it from their side, from their shoes. They were probably bullied from a kid, probably from their parents. This is just the only way that they know to deal with their own problems and lack of motivation and lack of positivity and lack of success or their fears, their shortcomings, their insecurities. A lot of times these people can change their ways. A bully can be flipped. You can flip a bully, I think. Enemies, a lot of times you can't flip an enemy. Maybe sometimes you can. A bully, you could probably flip. They're always that in-between one, like I was saying. You know, with the right guidance, surrounding themselves with the right people, a slight shift to their fucking mindset and they just need the right leadership or coach to just slap them out of it basically is what a bully needs so you know you might you might even have some pity for them and almost feel bad for the fuckers because they really don't know any better this is just their natural reaction their instinct of how to act so 
you know, and if this doesn't work, then just resort to the enemy solution, which was smashing their fucking face in. That'll work for anyone. So now on to the wimps, the empathy for the wimps. You know, it's funny. Someone told me one time that empathy is for wimps. And then now here we are talking about having empathy for wimps. So probably whoever said that probably fell into that bully category since they were, they were talking like that. So the wimp is, you know, just by like being the hardest to defeat is also the most complicated. They probably have the deepest, darkest skeletons in the freaking closet, which have caused this fake, slimy bitch assery that they, that they have in front of you and behind your back. That's where empathy comes in. They probably deserve empathy the least, but they probably need it the most. They're probably the most fucked up of all three of these groups. It's rather the hardest to deal with, the hardest to defeat, you know? They almost have no real beliefs or personality or even fucking direction in their life. It's hard to put yourself in their shoes since they don't even know what their own fucking shoes are. So sometimes just straightforward calling a wimp out on their shit is enough. Like, like just, just tell them, listen, I see where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. You're showing them that empathy. You're in their shoes. I see what you're trying to do here. You know, you can deceive other people, but you're not going to deceive me. I see what you're trying to do here with me. And, you know, I'm, I'm not as fucking stupid as I look or probably how, as stupid as I fucking sound right now. So either stop your shit or then we'll start to have, a, have an actual problem here. We don't have a problem right now, but you continue that shit. We probably will start to have a problem. And that should make the wimp stop their shit because they are, in fact, a wimp. Or it will at least make them disappear onto another target who hasn't had enough empathy to realize the truth about them and their freaking mental wimpiness. And if not, resort to, you guessed it, back to the enemy solution, which was... Who's got it? Smashing their fucking face in. Yes. You know, but even for the wimp, believe it or not, smashing their face in, that will not work. That will just juice, they will juice the victim card to death out of that. And their mission will continue to bring you down. But they're too weak for you. And your morals and determination and positivity are too strong for let them drag you down. But by having empathy, you know, you aren't being nice or giving in or agreeing with the dumbass freaking shit stick. The, the, the shit plastered Muppet farts. There's our quote, Brian Cleary. You're not agreeing with the shit plastered Muppet farts, but you are really working on your own self-development, opening your mind, learning how to deal with different people, different situations, and different advers- you know, adversaries. That's what you're doing by having empathy for the, your enemy, empathy for the bullies, and empathy for the wimps. Brian Cleary, if you're still there, did you get the quote? You say you can know the quote movies. I told you by having empathy, you're not giving in, you're not being nice, you're not agreeing with the dumbass shit stick. Holy shit, he got it, Deadpool. That is Tyson's favorite movie. He told me I had to say shit plastered Muppet fart today. And you got it right away. That is a good call. You get a freaking camo t-shirt for that. That was good. I didn't think you were going to get it because I know you were a freak with that stuff. That's why I was glad you were here. You got it. So by, you know, shit plastered Muppet fart was Deadpool. In case you guys wonder what the fuck I'm talking about. Deadpool's our second favorite, second favorite, um, What's it called? Superheroes. Deadpool's the second favorite. The number one favorite. Who do you think the number one favorite is, Brian Cleary? Who do you think my my number one favorite superhero is? Deadpool is the second favorite because he just talks shit. He just has fun. He says so much funny shit. He just doesn't give a shit. But who do you think my number one superhero is? If you could figure that out. If you could figure out who the number one superhero is while we're going on. So anyway, after having empathy, that's the first step to overcome and defeat and overpower the enemies, the bullies and the wimps. Not Batman, no. Batman's too nice. No, not Captain America. He's too clean cut. Needs someone that doesn't really care too much. So anyway, after having empathy, move on to the next step, which there's, um, is basically just to focus on what you need to do and not what others are doing. Basically just fucking ignore them. Spawn, no, it's a good guess, but it's the Hulk. Hulk, his super, Hulk doesn't even have superpowers. Hulk is my number one favorite. Hulk just gets pissed off, gets really mad, and starts fucking breaking shit. So that was always my number one favorite superhero was the Hulk, and Deadpool is there, number two. So anyway, so to defeat and overcome the enemies, the bullies, and the, the mindset wimps is first to have empathy for them, learn from them, and then ignore them. So now we're talking about ignoring them. These three types of losers all have one thing in common. They are all focused and concerned what you're doing. You know, they're watching and copying and criticizing and sabotaging and lying and trying to cause roadblocks on every step you take. 
you know, that is a recipe for failure in anything you're doing and exactly why you shouldn't be doing it and not waste much time on them, even with the empathy. So let them focus on you while their own shit crumbles deeper into that hellhole of an existence that they have. You know, while they're focusing on you, you're focusing on your goals and your body and your career and your fucking bank account. They will, they will, this will cause an even greater separation between you and, and, and those enemies down there and, and the, the, you know, the pack of fucking rotten wolves that are attempting to chase you. But, but with empathy and then ignoring them, they can't keep up. They'll just get blown the fuck away. They'll be broken down, destroyed, and defeated. And it's a fucking war, and the invasion is coming, and you, this is what you need to be ready. It is out there in all areas. Yeah, how'd you not get Hulk? Come on, Hulk was an easy one. So there, the recap. There's three categories, that's four, three categories of people that are out to, to, to cause your downfall. Not characteristic, three categories of people, three main categories of people that are out to get you. There's the enemies who are straightforward, there are the bullies who are kind of in between, and then there are the wimps who are just smiling in your face and then really trying to drag you down every second they get, the fake little wimps. The two ways to overcome them is to have empathy from all three of them and learn from them and put yourself in their shoes, see it from their perspective in order to overcome them and get past them and defeat them and then just fucking ignore them and focus on your own shit and not waste any time on these idiots that are standing still while you're freaking going to the moon. So that's all there is today for episode number 24. And if you missed it, we had a quote from Deadpool, which was shit plastered Muppet Fart. And that is our second favorite superhero and the number one is Hulk because he just gets green and pissed off and just breaks shit and has no superpowers except superpower of being pissed off. So that's it. If you have any questions, any comments, put them in there. I'll get back to you and I will talk to you later.